Welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, Hello. relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux. <laughs> I'm Ben Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and hmm. Juan Pedro Mateus and everyone sitting at home. Hmm. Maybe you're standing at home, standing desk sort of thing now. I'd like one, but that's a lot of standing. Um, watch this live <laughs> yeah. on Wednesdays. It's definitely a thing. What's going on, everyone? It's been a fun, exciting week. A lot of stuff going on. I've been playing around. If you follow me on the uh, twits, uh, Twitters, yes, that's the social media that starts with a T. I have been hacking away on a Pi Zero W because I was very, I think I talked about it last week. I definitely talked about it Saturday. I was looking around the internet and I'm like, yo, I want to build like a little webcam and see what the comparison is between like the high quality 12 megapixel camera which is across the room from me right now, uh, next to my Nikon D3400. I've got that together. It's working. I'm compiling a guide because the guides are just long, drawn out, and a lot of them are in, like, Mac or Windows E's that I don't get. I'm genuinely <laughs> legitimate issue. And it's not anything other than I've just, I don't know these, pro like, I don't have access to these programs. We could do this all with Linux. And I want to get you in and out in five minutes because that's how long it really takes to set up a um, Raspberry Pi webcam and uh, I got my last little parts Amazon delivery driver so lovingly launched this at my door <laughs> from my uh, front lawn which good arm on him I, I commented on that because he was still making his way back to his device so um, Patreons uh, check that out later this week I'll probably have that up maybe Friday uh, preview version of that it will be fascinating Jill what's new with you Oh boy, I'm working on two Ryzen builds. The first one, a mid-range uh, mini ITX build, probably with a 2600X. I may go up from there, and but haven't decided yet. And I'm actually waiting on the AMD GPU Big Navi announcement coming October 28th to decide what GPU I want to buy, AMD or NVIDIA. And of course, the new Ryzen uh, CPUs come out in November. So that's when I'm going to I'm going to build a big machine after that. <laughs> and yeah, hear it's a terrible all the time to be putting PCs together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no. What you have to do is you have to wait for the AMD announcement. Like, okay, now, now, mm -hmm. now i got to wait on the Intel. <laughs> yeah. Or the Power yes. VR, as Arthur had mentioned earlier in Discord. I saw Carly yeah. Power VR tweet that. Yeah. And <laughs> it's like, okay, well, Power VR has been a thing. They've, they've been rocking and rolling with that for a long time on um arm seeing that roll out i was mm -hmm. like oh okay well set the clock clock to what then till nvidia acquires a new <laughs> company <laughs> <laughs> they need that extra compute <laughs> no jensen's like yeah just add one of those to the collection why not, <laughs> why not? So, you know we got arm matching set right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> makes sense yeah. that'd just be get cool together. <laughs> or risk five <laughs> what's new pedro <laughs> yeah over here i got a thing in the mail today which i ordered like two weeks ago so uh, you know the slow boat from china is not as slow it's just one of those well it's 10 of these <laughs> teeny tiny little um soldering learning kits uh, it comes with a couple of transistors a couple of resi well four resistors uh two capacitors two leds and the little uh power supply input so yeah no, the base pcb of course so I, I i'm just gonna well i already got started on mounting everything and then i looked at the clock it's like oh yeah no it's wednesday today uh, here i am <laughs> At least you didn't bake a chicken. Hey, man, I want you to live stream some of that. You don't have to do it for everyone. I just want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Could probably do it from the phone, yeah? yeah. <laughs> because I I can't do it here. I have to do it in the kitchen on accounts of window. Yeah. So, yeah. 100% down with that. Uh, mm -hmm. Learn to solder kids. You'll save yourself a lot of money or cost yourself lots. It, it Ultimately, years later, they'll cancel each other out. You know, you're basically before you start. <laughs> Karma balances it out eventually. I'm, I'm yeah. just saying, sometimes, uh, <laughs> you know, if it's still working, you just haven't repaired it enough. <laughs> <laughs> I can improve it. Ah, Speaking yes. of improvements, uh, Linux 5.9 has been yes. released. Our, our favorite master of penguins, Linus Torvalds, has released Linux kernel 5.9 with lots of great enhancements. Um, it will have support for the latest, latest AMD GPUs being announced October 28th. Yay, big Navi. 
the RDNA uh, RX 6000 series. So it, it, initial <laughs> support. Initial so, support, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's it's probably going to be a lot like the 5000 CPU uh, GPU launch. Yeah, give take it a, a couple little of while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so there's also support for the Intel Rocket Lake graphics card, and there'll be Im performance improvements for our loved IBM ThinkPads. That's always a good thing, especially now that Lenovo is selling uh, their th their uh, ThinkPads with Ubuntu. And initial support for the IBM Power 10 processors. I thought that was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. We love Power 10. And there's just lots of... Guy, th this was a huge release, actually. There's better management of anonymous memory, a new slab memory controller, lower all overall kernel memory usage. It's just there. It it's huge. Yeah, go and read uh, the notes <laughs> to see all the changes made. It's amazing. <laughs> One of the things I saw in here, this is going to be the first release that supports the LG Ultra 5 5K monitor at a native 5K <laughs> resolution. That thing takes two yes. display ports. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> and you're thinking about that, and you're like, oh, okay, this thing's kind of neat. Maybe I want to play with that. That also requires Wayland. So I'm like, ah, nope. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Got to wait just <laughs> 10 more years, and uh, we'll be able to play around with it. <laughs> Yeah, the thing I know that popped out to me were all of the attempts to bring back the performance that was taken away from the uh, mitigations from the speculative execution exploits that were discovered mm. Mm. last year, this year, last year, and the year before that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's good to see that at least they now have a different way to try and uh, squeeze out that extra performance out of your CPUs. And it's not just for Intel CPUs, it's also for AMD ones because, well, they have uh, a matter of hyper-threading now too. They call it simultaneous multi-threading. But, yeah, no, that, 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 that's good to see. <laughs> or you could see uh, equals off. My peeps know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> Katie in Live 20.08.2 is yeah. our its thing. You can put it all over your PC. I made our credits with it today because why not? I wanted to try it out. There's a bunch of new stuff in this, man. This is going to bring um, a couple things people have been waiting on. But uh, this has got the automatic scene split feature. That's neat. Experimental mm -hmm. GPU rendering. Okay, yes. well, don't get too excited because it's just for proxy, but it's got a new crop effect. Besides the usual like round of uh, usability improvements and bug fixes, it's just a nice, solid little release. And those GPU profiles for rendering proxies, that's for your timeline preview. If you've got something you need to render down that you can't normally like cut through back and forwards, uh, that will take care of it. No, <laughs> no, no, no. The reason you have to create proxy clips is if you're using a nonlinear video editor that doesn't take advantage of <laughs> compute, where you can normally just scrub through regular <laughs> timelines. Also, I'll give everyone a little bit of advice. I see, I see this every now and then. Something's like, okay, I see this with DaVinci Resolve. Like, good, you can't out of the box. You got to give them, got to give them money, man. You got to make it rain a little bit in order to get um, MPEG Layer Four. MP4, H.264 support under Linux because it's a licensing thing. They're not trying to nickel and dime you. Um, but you don't want to edit in that anyway. Just don't, you know, throw it out to like ProRes or DNX HD. That's going to make your life infinitely easier. But you have some thoughts on this, Jill. Yeah. Well, I was actually really looking forward to the GPU profiles for timeline preview rendering as well. Because I often use lots of effects in the timeline, and it gets really clunky, clunky and slow, even on really high-end systems. So I'm really looking forward to to putting that to it in a, to its paces, and it will improve Caden Live so much uh, once they get full full GPU acceleration across the whole uh, the pipeline. Hmm. Definitely. Hmm. Ten more years, Jill. Just yeah. <laughs> 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 they are accelerating actually really quickly, so uh, it, I've been impressed. That, that needle hasn't like, budged, man. Not, not with the, not with the GPU acceleration. Like, yeah, has KDN yeah, Live true. even been around for 10 years? 
Close. 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 Yeah. I don't think it has been 10 years. Close, sure. <laughs> it's a great project. We use it to make the credits. Um, and it's great if you want to jump in, do some things. But um, the TV yeah. has like, focused <laughs> on something that I think a lot of a lot of people should focus on. Um, a lot of projects should focus on. And it's not these features. It's not all this extra whiz bang stuff. No, Jill. <laughs> They're focused on stability. Yes, stability, stability, stability. And yeah, this is a, a, the new release of Pity V 2020.09. It's um, an entry level video editor that a lot of us have used under, under Linux. And uh, don't count it out as a really good editor. It has really come a long way. I've been very impressed with Pity V's updates and features over the last few years. And it's stability. It really works well and it's really fast. And I installed the Pity V uh, flat pack and really had fun testing it out. This, you know, this version has everything you need to create a quick video, whether it be editing, transition, creating transitions, creating title clips, creating color clips, which was just added in this version, and adding effects. And one of the things I was really impressed about with this version of Pity V and um, the previous newer ones is that um, the ability to adjust the volume in the timeline quickly by just clicking on the track and using keyframes with what we call the rubber band in in the industry to adjust your volume up and down easily like uh, like the other more professional uh, video editors have like DaVinci Resolve and uh, Pro Adobe Premiere so that, that you know the fact that they added something like that that's not usually included in entry level uh, video editors i was really impressed with and you know i've really i've recommended pdv to people coming over from windows and mac who just need a quick and easy video editor on linux because it is so easy to use but yet it has some very professional features and it's just really awesome. I've been really, I was really impressed with this release. Yay. Pretty decent. Um, yeah, a couple <laughs> things with this. Uh, like I said, they're making a big point. They're focusing, laser focused mm -hmm. on stability. And that's something everybody should pay attention to because uh, one of the yes. reasons, you know, I'd used OpenShot for a long time because I initially started doing make videos for like Steamcast Weekly for like 10 years ago um, with Katie and Life. So, yeah, I guess Katie and Life's been around right about a decade. So yeah. right there about, <laughs> and uh, Katie and Live bit me hard, man. Like yeah. I had a giant things stacked up, and it just lost. It also <laughs> started using open shot. Then what about Katie and Live? Stability is a very, very important thing that um, all nonlinear video editors you run into. It's a real issue. But a um, couple of things you know that plugin system is going to be very, very welcome. Easy Ken Burns effect. Pedro, yeah. I knew you were personally excited about that. <laughs> so I have no idea what that is. I know that's that's where I'm going. I, I want to I want to know what do you think the Ken Burns effect is? <laughs> okay, first of all, uh, not American. I know my accent might this, uh, this indicate that I am universally known <laughs> thing in any video editor. It, it's known yeah. as the Ken Burns effect for video. It's not an American thing. So. That I was going to say, uh, I'm not familiar with the uh, pop culture, much less when it comes to <laughs> video editors, because I've used those total of 10 times. I guess. The origins of this starts with uh, documentaries. Public Broadcasting Network, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, a, a lot of the, the um, oh, World War... Two and World War One documentaries from PBS back in the nineties. Yeah, became a thing. <laughs> and the effect is where you slowly zoom in to a corner of a, a picture. It's it's like a um, um, a slideshow with a bunch of pictures you put in sequence together, and um, the camera moves around the picture and zooms in on it, and then it fades to the next one and moves around and zooms in on it. <laughs> Pedro, you're familiar with the effect. You just didn't know we named it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, you've uh, seen I, it everywhere. I've seen that effect several yeah. times in 
just yeah. about every documentary I've ever watched. Um, <laughs> so what else do we have? Uh, Nested Timelines, Color Clips, and Keyboard Shortcuts aimed at pros. So you're going to see something like, um, if you've ever opened up DaVinci Resolve, one of the first things that hits your eyeballs with is like, hey, man, do you want to use like, um, what is it? Uh, Adobe Shortcuts. Premiere. Yeah, Premiere. If you're accustomed to that, we, 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 we can help yeah. you out. Or do you just want to <laughs> like, nope. I don't know those, so that's good that that's going to be in there. And the next milestone, hitting hard. Back on the bug fixes and uh, some good nice. cleanup. I will say this. Um, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, behind uh, over at the blog.pativi.org, what do you have against pictures? Like, oh, yeah. Anyway. I know. It was, there was just one. <laughs> <laughs> you get the one screenshot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're just doing the show, and I'm like, there's, okay, let's just go to the front page. Okay, let's about nothing. <laughs> I, I was over here scrambling while Joe was talking. I'm like, well, no screenshots for this one. Um, <laughs> YouTube backup. Tell me about it. Yeah, so mm -hmm. this is a project by Alex York. You can find it on GitHub, and it is just YouTube backup. And I started reading through it. Admittedly, I started skipping through the wall of text a little bit, and uh, is like goals. Okay, Occam's How razor. Dare you? Did is you did you see the point where it's brutally simple? Yeah, yeah, I saw that, and then okay. I saw a bunch of more text, but then I saw the big goals thing. It's like right. okay, Occam's razor thinking is strongly preferred for this project. Okay, no, the Occam's razor, the simplest solution is often the correct one. Cool. I'm with you. Uh, <laughs> brutally simplifying the code at the expense of features. Okay, do one thing and do it well. I'm a Linux user. That's the Unix philosophy right there. So, again, still with you. So, <laughs> I then go back and actually start reading the how to use. It's like, edit the .env file with your S3 API or S3 API uh, information. Like, uh-huh. Uh... What? I can't hear you from inside my Docker container. <laughs> uh, after, um, you know, the next paragraph, it starts after editing the file, just run Docker Compose up YouTube channel downloader. Mm -hmm. Did anyone see my interest? Because I think I just lost it. Pedro, why do you hate progress? Um. <laughs> Aww. No, it Seriously? <laughs> Well, I like that there is a there is actually no code in the files in the program to delete files. So you can so you can't delete files accidentally, which is really awesome. And I thought this was a great use of YouTube slash DL, Pirates. one of our favorite Pirates. YouTube Pirates. downloaders. Stealing my content. <laughs> that it's totally realistic under Creative yeah. Commons. <laughs> and yeah, you could use this method also to back up from Twitch, and I think it's brilliant. Yeah, it's really well done. Nice script that runs. and It's thick, man. A couple of things to get a look out for outside of like, I mean, if you're a kid, all right, fine. You get Docker set up on your personal computer at home because that, that's how everybody's doing the things these days. That's fine. Whatever. I'm not going to judge. You can only download public videos. And mm. when you download uh, anything from a channel, you're getting it all. You don't get to pick and choose. So keep that in mind. No half backups, man. Um you can't do individual backups of like playlists or like channels. Like you're getting it all if you're doing that. Just 100% age gated videos. They hunger for cookies. So they have to um, be set. <laughs> I mean, it, you have to set your cookies in there so it knows that, hey, look, I said I'm over the age of, I don't know, the age is like 18 or 13 or whatever on YouTube. So that's the thing. It's there. And uh, put that in your Docker and run it. <laughs> yeah no i think that simplicity got a bit lost there you know a little bit once you get it set up pedro see i'm doing that yes thing after i've taken the two hours to get it set up and learn the uh syntax but yeah no i'm sure up, it's fine Listen, I'm, I'm over here blindly running stuff in the sandbox <laughs> hopefully <laughs> <laughs> there's a new version of the gimp out Yay, GIMP 2.10.22 has been released. Our, one of our favorite uh, graphics editors on Linux. 
and uh, Windows and Mac as well. So it's it's definitely a bug fix release with lots of maintenance changes to the oh, core Lord, code. Lua scripting. I hate that Aww. because I have to deal with that with our door. Oh, that's our 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 our, our favorite character from Gimp Wilbur. <laughs> He's our little mascot. So um, yeah, so a lot of maintenance changes to the core code and overall infrastructure of GIMP. But one of the most important improvements is that of better image file format support. And yes, as you were seeing seeing there, there is a, a support for the <laughs> I just lost it. <laughs> AVIF, <laughs> AVIF file format, which is actually really cool because it is a feature contender for a web image format that is open and royalty free. So that might be our next uh, PNG on the internet. And there are improvements to all the file formats, BMP, DDS, JPEG, WebP, XPM, and improved multi-layer support for TIFF or exporting which is really good because that's a f the tiff we often use for printing in graphics and since many of us use gimp for converting image file formats this is these are very important updates <laughs> and it'd be nice if i could awesome. export some webp or jpeg 2000 yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> or even open it without it throwing an error box to start with you know what <laughs> yeah. I, I don't even think about it. i just change it to jpeg and i'm like you know what <laughs> yeah you can figure it out man um that's good news always good to see new updates on the gem but backup's a very <laughs> serious thing it's uh something that usually by the third time that you've completely hosed yourself, you finally make good on that promise to implement um, at least some type of partial solution. And it some seems- Some kind of backup solution. Yeah, you know, yeah. something that might stand a chance of backing up something, possibly. Daniel um, wants to share his mojo with uh, the Humbuntus. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, uh, Van was saying that uh, you know, backups are a very good thing to do, and the chances are you've probably done goofed yourself at you some point. You probably lied to, to yourself people, on several occasions, saying, I'm going yes. to <laughs> implement a backup strategy. <laughs> but to some people, uh, backups are sort of a religion. Take Daniel mm -hmm. Rosehill, <laughs> where he, uh, he has not just a, the three... Um, usual uh solutions like you have the the copy on the same system the copy on an external drive and the copy in the cloud he also has an aws copy on top of that just because but yeah no it's a, it is actually uh his backup strategy but pedro it's... we're confused and angered by aws even though i have to constantly <laughs> interact with it on daily nah. basis. Uh, strider was actively mocking me earlier on discord because i didn't know what uh, or i didn't have any uh s3 credentials like i don't need them i'm trying to use my desktop computer whatever whatever but... scrub <laughs> <laughs> this one is, uh, yeah, basically he just guides you through setting up, uh, if you'd like to do it like him, where he actually has a schedule and he has a way to do it. Wait a minute, how can you uh, tell what it's it. inside that case? Huh? Uh, <laughs> that's, you open the case, you plug it in, no, no, you do the listen, backup I'm and you plug it out. <laughs> if you're going to tell me it's a hot spare, I can't even see it through that. I can't tell. Uh, no HTT, one TV, like. Ubuntu. No, you, got, you have to get that um, t-shirt a little bit wet. Don't do it. <laughs> that's, that's right. Pedro, uh, Pedro Mateus, hard drives, they be thirsty. <laughs> yes, they are. Uh, thirsty on main, as it were. Uh, but no, it, it is basically the way he do uh, he does it. Um, it's easy. It, he uses Clonezilla for the on-site monthly backups. He uses TimeShift for uh, the daily backups, uh, which TimeShift is included with uh, a lot of Linux distros out of the box now. And um, on-site monthly, uh, he also uses Clonezilla for an external hard drive and yearly for the AWS backup. It's um, no, it, that I agree with the, having those many copies especially if you are working in something that <laughs> you kind of need Pedro that how much is this going to cost me uh nothing uh well AWS might cost you something <laughs> Pedro how much is this going to cost me <laughs> Or the hard drives, if you don't happen to have a bunch of them lying around, which I can't reach okay. the drawer right now. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> I, I think I'm getting through to them, everyone. Um, Pedro, 
as a non-hoarder, how much is this going to cost me? <laughs> well, if you want to buy uh, the three one terabyte hard drives, you'll be dropping around $220 uh, for the external SSD to make those copies uh, a bit faster. That's another 75 on top of that. Uh, and for the enclosure that allows you to plug in and carry it around, it he spent $50 on his, but that's pricey <laughs> and um the usb drive which is yeah no you just go to the dollar store and find one although probably worth spending the five like he suggests mm. <laughs> <laughs> well i thought this was a really great um article daniel rosehill um lots of great suggestions and i like your workflow because i am as ocd as you are i too keep at least three backups of everything and instill this in my animation students with their projects because in the animation pipeline there have been many times when we've lost our first copy and the original copy and had to go to the third <laughs> so i hear you there and i actually use deja dupe instead of time sh time shift but i like time shift too I've been using Deja Dupe for years. And instead of Clonezilla, which is really a nice GUI option, I use the old school part image on my workstations. Been doing that for years. And, uh, and thank you also for the Cloudberry backup for Linux suggestion. That is really cool. I had never heard of that cloud backup app. So I'm going to definitely play with that. And there's a free version of it. So very good. I think that's all nice. It's kind of brilliant. Um, I will say I started reading this article and he's like, well, you know, I'm celebrating my uptime birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I guess that's a good way to ensure that you get those backups <laughs> regularly. <laughs> you made that up. It's not a thing and we're not going to let it be a thing, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, but the, the whole premise behind this was effectively, which is something I, I genuinely just took issue with a little bit, hear me out, is I'm stating that, well, you know, setting up Linux is really very difficult and time compared to what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I say that. Like, I nuked and paved Jackbox, our DAW, which has a laundry list of, like, custom tweaks that has to be done for it, for the real-time audio and all the uh, fiber um, noodle stuff going mm. on. Timed it because I'm that type of person. It's three seven minutes. <laughs> desktop. Desktop Ubuntu. USB drive to working system. What, Pedro? 15? If, if you're slow, if you're HDD? If you're on a hard drive, yeah, it'll take you about 15, 20 minutes. That's all I'm on saying. If you chose to install the updates or not, don't. I'm not saying don't. you're wrong. I'm just saying <laughs> don't, don't, don't scare people with, oh, Linux, is, Linux is like super wicked quick and super wicked and like just easy to set up. Like anybody can set it up. You can plug it yeah. in. It's yes. less, <laughs> like especially with like Canonical, Kubuntu, something like that. That's less involved than Windows, man. That's like, give mm -hmm. me a username. Give me a password. All right. Gotcha. <laughs> Go chill out. Not don't really get comfortable though. Come right back and I'll be done. <laughs> it won't take that long. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but once you get Linux up and working and everything. Oh, personally, like for my backup stuff, it's uh I do want to say my little pro tip, learn to use R Sync. Do it. Ah, yes. It's something <laughs> I had to do. I didn't have to at one, but I'm glad I did. You know, it's not like, oh, this is fun. This isn't it's not. It's not fun. It's not terribly interesting. But you can do some interesting and powerful stuff with it, especially over the network, especially when you tie in a little thing I like to call lazy man's networking, SSHFS. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, you can automate <laughs> all types of fun stuff with that. And uh, that's the thing. But once you get that box up and working, Pedro, and you think, man, you know what? I'm looking at this GNOME monitor. I think too many people run no monitor. It's a bit mainstream for my taste. <laughs> to be what fair, am I more to do? people run the oh, Windows yes. Test Manager. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, this is what Sysmon is very much trying to emulate. It's the Windows Test Manager. Uh, if you've had the unfortunate um, occasion to have to run Windows for work at some point, you probably are very aware of uh, the Windows Test Manager. And there are a lot of features that, especially the Windows 10 um, version of Windows Test Manager, it does have a lot of pretty graphics and uh, little uh, 
progress bars and the way that it lays everything out. It's very appealing to a lot of people. I get that. And if you are trying to, you know, appease uh, a, a newcomer to Linux, it's probably not a terrible idea to have <laughs> oh, Sysmon. Oh, look at that. Yeah. You, you just lost it. Just <laughs> like with those magic words. Um, right, <laughs> you know what? I'll use pip over Docker any day. You know what? Uh, yes. The- okay, fair point. <laughs> I like Pip. Pip is nice. <laughs> no, Pip is uh, it's sane enough that you can figure it out, and it's sane mm-hmm. enough that uh, if you decide to nuke, it'll also get rid of any unused dependencies. Thank you. Uh, mm-hmm. The um, no, the Sysmon. Uh, what it tries to do is yeah, just emulate the uh, Windows Test Manager experience. However. If you are targeting the Windows people for, you know, that kind of look and that kind of functionality, what's the likelihood of them actually hearing about a third-party system manager, task manager type of situation that doesn't come pre-baked into the distro that they chose? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, It's people love to be familiar with stuff. That is the biggest question of like, where do I go to download all my apps that look the same and work the same? Oh, so you're relying on blog posts. <laughs> the blog post that says, make your um, Linux desktop look exactly like Windows XP. Yes. I followed those. <laughs> you were there, child. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like that it, in the future versions, it's going to support, there'll be support for Intel and AMD GPUs. So that's very good. Right now, there's only NVIDIA. And on this uh, box that I'm running an RX 580, you know, of course, that that I just saw the picture that the... Steve posted in Discord. And I was like, "What's wrong with that cockatoo?" <gasps> oh, Pippi Longstocking! Pippi Longstocking! Pip! <laughs> Pip install! Pippi Longstocking! Those are some of my favorite movies. <laughs> I am Pippi Longstocking. Okay, so we lost so, anyways. <laughs> So anyways, there's also going to be a dark mode in uh, that's planned for future releases, which I'm happy about because all that white hurts my eyes. <laughs> uh, if you have a dark mode uh, or you have a dark theme set, it actually does a very good job of inheriting that. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, Listen, it hey, does, but I, hey, Pedro, I wasn't you got a dark using theme it. On... You got a dark theme set? Hey, I'm Thunderbird. Come on. <laughs> I'm I also have a custom dark theme set for Thunderbird, okay? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I was using it under Flexbox. <laughs> that's the thing. That's kind of brilliant. Um, that's good to see. I mean, Activity Monitor, admittedly, I will straight up crack. I, there's nothing wrong with like the Like, H-Top, yeah. I talk about that a lot. But if I just need to, like, nuke something, especially like a group of somethings, no system manager. I mean, it's there. I'm like, boop. Mm-hmm. Even though it likes to always open this monitor way over here because that's how it rolls. <laughs> we, we've just agreed to disagree in that point of our relationship. But yeah, I'm like, all right, did, 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 all right, did, right click, kill, done. Hey, look, that's dead. And I'll leave it open if, I, if I'm troubleshooting. Usually something proton related. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good to not just leave uh, GNOME System Monitor or Cases One or whatever one you prefer. Yeah. But also be SSH did mm-hmm. to the the, <laughs> the box that you're testing on because the moment it freezes, it's like kill everything, go. <laughs> right. So we got to talk about uh, you know the internet was they, they tried to get not even a panic they, they tried to get big humbum about it the um oh no microsoft is going to be running linux and all that no 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 but we need to talk about it the microsoft <laughs> loves linux <Yes>. because <laughs> hayden has walked in be like yo man seriously did, did we have to really do that internet <laughs> so yeah as I'm sure everyone knew, but I mean, it's, it's fun to talk about theorized spitball is Microsoft is going to rebase on Windows or rebase Windows and Linux. No, it's not. I mean, Microsoft's turning into a services company. Yeah, I don't have to worry about that. Did you see anything in here other than like, you know, WSL does not by default do upgrades and all that fun stuff. Uh, yeah, it's effective clickbait. That's all that was, right? Yep. And uh, it is like the whole blog post, except this, for some of the. This I wanted to bring up though, because I know we talked yeah. about this on T Colonel Saturdays. Mm-hmm. Was oh, I know 
we talk about backwards compatibility. That is something, if you're going to be perfectly fair, Windows wrecks Linux on. Like, then again, wine wrecks Windows. <laughs> Although I can't it install does. Windows. <laughs> I can't install Windows on my old computers, a new version. <laughs> I have to use Linux. <laughs> That's because you use an old junky computers. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, to be fair, uh, Hayden's uh, little post here is like reasonable all the way through. Though I did think mm -hmm. he picked some flawed uh, supporting articles that he linked. Oh, please, uh, when uh, whatever he... you're acting like somebody could be wrong on the internet. <laughs> he's not wrong that's the whole thing uh his post is right it's like the most sensible uh post about this whole thing that i've seen um and yeah no uh, it's just the um some of the backup articles that he picked uh, to link like oh um uh, the uh pc marketing is now back up and it's all thanks to microsoft's efforts I think there's a certain global pandemic that has more to say about that than Microsoft ever did, or Windows uh, for that uh, matter. Mere coincidence. Uh, yeah, and, um, you know, outside of that, he does have a point. He's like, he even brings up the uh, the Surface Neo, because, yeah, no, that's... Windows is going to Windows for as long as Microsoft uh, doesn't find an effective way to just offer Windows as a service on top of an ARM surface mm -hmm. so yeah it's uh and his other argument was basically this will all boil down to um kvm versus hyperx that was never really a fight come on no i mean it's the thing his argument is like we're just all gonna be booting into a hypervisor and running whatever yeah. yeah yeah it's just whether people would standardize on hyperx or kvm it's like that 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 fight it never even existed as much as microsoft would like to have people believe that it did it didn't yeah, it's microsoft and come on can you imagine <laughs> being a redman right now be, be, being the guy who was in charge of windows rt like oh are we going to arm now <laughs> yeah repeatedly <laughs> from the look of things <laughs> After killing the project and abandoning the Surface RT, it's like, oh, there's another service running on an What arm. do RTs go for what? eBay these days? I wouldn't mind. I'm going to make a skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> I think last I checked really about $100. <laughs> that might be something to play with. Uh, cool. We thought we'd give that a mention. Everyone could just yes. chill out. I don't think anyone was like, it's always just like a fun thought experiment though. Like, uh, yeah, it is. You know, we've been having that conversation <laughs> since the nineties of, I, I distinctly remember like even in university, I think even in secondary school, we were mm -hmm. like, Oh, when's Microsoft just going to release its own, uh, like desktop manager. Like, mm. I don't know. I mean, they're making Linux desktop managers work in Windows. So. How many more days of October do we have left? Because Edge <laughs> is supposed to drop out of a sky like a low-yield thermonuclear warhead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Meteor <And> 2020. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Maybe that sets everything off. <laughs> well, you know, um, uh, Hayden, uh, he, he brought this up, too, about, you know, the uh, Microsoft won't give up DirectX uh, and, win, and their Windows PC gaming franchise right now. It's, it's Easily, kind of exploding. <laughs> so and their and their loved Xbox. So <laughs> Microsoft that's definitely Microsoft. a thing. So um, check it out. If you like what we do, you want to kick us some shackles, that's kind of brilliant. Best way to do that is head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We get a bunch of membership levels. We got a gang of beautiful party patrons helping us each and every week. All of you lovely people, come check out the end. Your name's going to be in the credits, man. We got Cherling's Death Note, Sea Monsters, mm -hmm. and uh, six more levels. They're terrifying. Chicago. Can't say the rest of that. Go look for yourself. <laughs> Executive producers and advisors. Helping us do this, man. Um, we got an interesting business model where we just give everything away. And if you like it, and like, you know, all right, hey, that's that's kind of brilliant. And we get to do a bunch of extra things. Now, we do have merch. Um, Yay! If you want to buy some. StarLotLinuxGameCast.com. <laughs> that does work. And if you want to, like, scare friends and family for October, buy them some LGC merch. Now, admittedly, it might confuse them more than scare them. But hey, man, take a win where you can get it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Buy the pink thing. Frank shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Hell elks in pink. Uh, spoilers. <laughs> Jordan and I are working on some custom gear, but we're going to have to test them on um, ourselves first. Yeah. <laughs> looking. And a couple other things we do have. If you're ever curious about anything that is effectively in this room, it has been stuck together, itemized. And I don't say buy it off Amazon. I don't, especially this latest stuff I've thrown up, but we have, what do they even call it? I think it's like an influencers list. It's amazon.com oh, yeah. <laughs> forward slash shop yeah, forward slash Linux Amazon GameCast, storefront. And it's uh to finish that thought. If you just go to like our web zone, go to the about section, but it's definitely everything we have. Like, um, I want to take some of the guesswork because like, Hey man, maybe you want to build one of these pie camera things. That's what you need to buy. Just, you don't want to buy that camera module on Amazon because they want $93 for it. And that's a $50 part. So yeah, mm. <laughs> keep that in mind. Um, but that applies to like all the computers and stuff that's stuck together, uh, networking stuff, office supply stuff, man. I've tried to be very good just in case I ever have to come back to, um, like the insurance. I, <laughs> it'll be real easy to itemize everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you see this here? I have one of each. Yeah. The there we go. Yeah. Save them time. Hours. I just send it to the like, oh, those. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. By the way, all that's new because I tend to buy used stuff. Nice and costume. If you want to end up on our fine upstanding cannibal wall and be one of these beautiful people, you can uh, head over to our wish zone, which again, it's more Amazon stuff. We don't use it as uh, what we're supposed to. Maybe you just want to head over and take a look at some of the stuff I'm planning on buying for the studio. Up to and including this. Pedro, what are your thoughts on that? I don't know if I trust these. Uh, that's, it's a 1700X or a regular 1700. So that's probably fine. I wouldn't recommend a 120 AIO for anything. Why not? 240 minimum. 240. <laughs> because the thermal density of the amount of liquid that you can have in a 120 is not enough, usually. But, but if it's, it's just a 1700 and it's idle most of the time, it's probably fine. Yeah. It's uh yeah. well, it's, it's a sixty-five watt TDP, man. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. It, it just gets loud at like on hour three on Saturdays. <laughs> 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 then again, it's got a hyper two twelve on it, but I mean, what doesn't? I mean, that's the mm. yeah, hey, go check out I Jill and Pedro. They got like legitimate. <laughs> Pedro and Jill both have legitimate wish list uh, with like stuff and knickknacks and toys and stuff that they want. And they yes. will, they'll, they'll read. They'll, they'll be good people. They'll uh, pull out like a little card that you can send them. <laughs> and they'll be like, oh, thank you. And they'll read whatever you say. Anything I make them. That's kind of brilliant. Yes. <laughs> Literally anything that won't land me in jail. So how that? Yeah. It's got to be I, family friendly for worry, the show, though. Don't edit it and post and make it. <laughs> yes, like that's true. Weird. The power of editing. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fun. All right. Uh, we need to get into... A slice of pie. Oh, you found yeah. the Sauron pie. <laughs> Great, Ben. Well, I had to, <laughs> since we're going to be talking about yes. the pie of Sauron. <laughs> yes. Pedro, you looked into this, so you take it. I do. And it's basically um, like uh, the Raspberry Pi blog does every year. They like to pick out a theme for the month and then show like all the projects that people do. I love this uh, time of the month, though, man. It's like I buy house decorations. Have no illusions, kid. There are sections of my house that look exactly like you think it would. <laughs> yeah. And uh, of course, it's October. So there's a lot of Halloween stuff going on. But Wait, what that. is that? And, uh, is that a TIE fighter? No. No, that is the Eye of Sauron. Pi of Sauron. The Eye of Pyron. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> but yeah, I actually had a look. I had to look at that because I saw that picture. It's like, so there's exposed copper wires and they're all lit up. Is there a video? Um, <laughs> yeah, there so is a like, video. <laughs> yeah. But it's, uh, it's buried uh, somewhere. <laughs> That's the there one there. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, no, it's like, are those lit up by uh, just running enough electricity through it to make them incandescent? But no, no, no. As it turns out, there's teeny tiny little LEDs strung along the uh, the copper wires that make that effect. And uh, dude actually adapted a project that someone else had done to uh, project the eyes, the eye movement to two different lenses. And he projected a single one. And of course, he did the eye of sauron so that that 
that looks amazing. If you go look at the video, if you're not watching the video version, uh, find the show notes, go click on the link, click on the video. It's really well done. Mm. Very good job. Jill, did you yeah, beautifully done. <laughs> yeah, I love the black jan- jack-o'-lantern. It was a 3D printed uh, big jack-o'-lantern and it's got these creepy eyes that move around that are on a ras- uh, big raspberry pi uh, screen and he made made they made a, a slot for the raspberry pi in um, that slides right into the center of the jack-o'-lantern so that it's it's stable and it's really creepy. I is love it. it. Is it creepy Jill or does it look like kitty cat? <laughs> oh, it does kind of, they are kind of kitty cat eyes, but yeah, a little more evil, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's kitty they, cat, so it's evil. They're, they're conduits no. to the underworld. <laughs> <laughs> I love kitties. Actually, it, the eyes are similar to my kitty cat Frodo. My black kitty has, has uh, greenish yellow eyes. out of a pumpkin? <laughs> no, but if he was, that's what it would look like. <laughs> hey, beautiful people, we're over time. If you want to get in touch with us, tell us about your cats trapped inside digital pumpkins, or maybe you have a Soren <laughs> of your own. Um, how can they uh, send us a note? Uh, maybe a message. Communicate, if you will, Pedro. Well, uh, mm-hmm. they can build their own version of Baradur and send us light signals with the gigantic eye that they the put on top. The beacons are lit. Gondor calls for ale. <laughs> Gondor calls for ale? No. And here I thought I was the drunk. Pedro, okay. Pedro, uh, see, the sad thing is, is well, I, I know for myself I'm thinking about a comic when we say that. About yes. being 10 at the beach, but Okay. <laughs> But yeah, no, the, um, if you would like to get in touch with us, besides building your own replica of a fantasy tower with a mystical eye on top of it, the best way is to go to loscapecast.com, hitting the, um, contact button and filling out the form, fill out your name, fill out your email, a subject, make sure you pick LWDW as a show that you're sending your, uh, feedback to. Otherwise it may be misinterpreted and, uh, considered hate mail. That's the true, true. So that's going to do it for this week. Uh, we'll be Yay. back uh, after the fact. Oh, so keep fun. an eye out because I'm still like in a boxing match with Cloudflare right now because we've in- uh. implemented um, this new system, which does effectively edge caches our entire site around the globe. And they don't have all the kinks hammered out just yet. So if it takes a minute for like feed step date or something, when I say a minute, mm. I mean like 12, 13 hours, uh, I'm still hammering things out, but until next week, we'll see you. Awesome. Um, let's roll some credits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, I got the thing set up. Yay. <laughs> Thank you for everyone who joined us in chat. I saw Mila Gamer Linux in there. Daisy, Artharin, Mir, Strider, Steve Husband. Linux Ganuru, and lots of people in there. All our wonderful uh, patrons and supporters. Okay, Yay. now that I have found the uh, the comic <laughs> and shared it with everyone. <laughs> That's working up. Well, what do you mean I'm working? <laughs> I have it pulled up right now for like <laughs> the live oh. stream. <laughs> Computer Kid, thank you for joining us. And Buckawful. Buckawful in there. Spooky Bad, Spooky beautiful people. We'll see you next Sir week. Sir Ballas. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Lucid Links. Bye-bye. <laughs>